Hey guys, welcome to another VETSIM tutorial here on the Aviation Pro Channel. Um, as you can see, I'm flying here in a very clear day in European airspace uh, en route from Amsterdam to Vienna. And in today's video, I want to talk about how to deal with ATC and the flight management system en route. Now, the cruise time might seem very boring. As you can see, I've now just reached cruise. Uh, but actually, a lot can happen, and especially on a short, shorter route, you know, you might get certain instructions and you always need to um, keep a listen to the radio to make sure you don't miss a instruction for you know your particular flight um, so I'm just gonna go over some of the things that you can encounter when uh, you are cruising and because I'm just gonna go from the you know the basic stuff to the more advanced stuff that you don't do not see that often um, so first thing I want to talk about is when to contact ATC. It's a topic that often comes by in the questions on my videos. Um, but the basic thing is, um, you know, as soon as you're leaving a controller's airspace on Vatsim and there's no other controller that's available next, the controller will send you to Unicom. And Unicom is on 1 to 2 decimal 8, so you just tune it in the radio right here, 1 to 2 decimal 8. And then in your pilot client, vPilot in my case, uh, you will be able to send text messages to other pilots to let them know what you're doing. Now, then the question is, what if suddenly a controller pops up? Well, in that case, uh, you just wait and wait for that controller to send you a contact me message. And you will see a message pop up in vPilot saying, hey, I'm online, so please contact me on this and this frequency. It might also happen that you're flying from Unicom area, you know, an area without ATC into an area with ATC. What should you do then? Well, in that case, also just wait for contact me. Um, you know, as a pilot, it's not entirely clear what the exact boundaries of a certain, you know, ATC stations are. Uh, you know, we have to remember their horizontal and vertical boundaries in airspace. So uh, the best practice is just to wait for contact me message to controller roll. Uh, see you in time and then uh, you can just uh, tune in that frequency and go from Unicom to that controller So that's pretty simple. Now the next thing that you often see is a direct uh, direct routing to a particular waypoint and uh, You know some people find this somehow a bit difficult, but actually it's not um, You know a direct routing helps you to shorten your route, which increases efficiency and of course allows you to arrive a little bit earlier and it's quite common on Vatsim to get this uh, simply because there's not too much traffic so uh, direct routing should usually be no problem. Um, the question is which waypoint will you get a direct to? Well there are a couple of you know, little tricks to deal with this. Um, in principle any waypoint on your flight plan you can be sent direct to. So uh, first thing I would advise you to do is as you, um, you know, put in your flight plan or in whichever way you do that, make sure you can just give a review of all the waypoints that are on the list so that you kind of have an idea what all the waypoints sounds like because we all know that the pets and radio quality is not that good so uh, you know you kind of get an idea what the waypoints sound like and where on whereabouts those waypoints are if they are in the beginning middle or at the end of the route so just read out the names for yourself so you can know all right these are my waypoints. If I hear if I hear something similar suddenly on the radio saying KLM 37 Juliet direct to blah blah blah, then I know, okay, that's the waypoint that I should direct to. Okay, so just give those names a review. It really really helps. Uh, another little trick is that you can just look at your uh, route that came with your flight plan. In most cases, uh, you will get a direct to a waypoint that connects you from your current airway to another airway. So in this case, it could be a Dupo. Uh, Mischo, Degom, Tesha, Osbit, Lulag, you know, things like that. Um, those are kind of the waypoints that you can see on your actual route um, that you might most often get a direct to. Of course, there are a lot of more waypoints on your route because you're flying via airways, but the connecting waypoints usually are used for directs. And another thing to keep in mind is, is, for example, if you're flying in German airspace like I do now, uh, it often happens that the controller there will just send you a direct to a waypoint that's at the end of their airspace. Um, for example, if there's only one controller in Germany, hypothetically, 
it will just send you to the first waypoints where you enter the check airspace, which is the next part of my route. So in this case, that waypoint is called Lulag. And, um, you know, it just, it just kind of helps you to understand where do I probably get a direct. So in this case, I'm just going to pretend that the controller is sending me a direct to a waypoint, and let's see how that goes. Can have 37 Juliet, proceed direct to Ospit. Proceed direct to Ospit, KLM 37 Juliet. So in this case, we got a direct. We have to go to the flight management system. As you can see, Ospit is uh, actually the next waypoint after Tesla. So I'm just going to click on this line select key and replace Tesla with Ospit. So it goes right here and hit execute. So now we're directing to Ospit. Very simple, right? So any waypoint, you just click on it make sure it replaces the active waypoint and then you will direct to that waypoint. This is at least how it works on a Boeing 737 FMC. If you're flying an Airbus or an Embraer, for example, there's something called direct function. There's a direct knob on the flight management computer and you can use that function to direct to a waypoint. But the principle is pretty simple. You, you know, just make sure you kind of have an idea of the names. Make sure um, you, know, you know where the waypoints are on your route and in that way, uh, flying at a direct is more easy. Now, the next thing that you might often uh, see is a step climb, especially if you're flying a longer route, then a step climb can be pretty common. So that just basically allows you to go from a lower flight level to a higher flight level, because as you burn fuel, the aircraft gets lighter and it may be more efficient to fly at a higher altitude. And also the aircraft might previously have not been able to climb to a higher altitude, but since it's lighter right now, it can climb to a higher altitude. So, step climbs are fairly common. On this route from Amsterdam to Vienna, it's not that common, you know. Uh, the route is simply too short. Uh, so, in, um, in reality, I probably would not do a step climb. Um, but uh, I will just show you for demonstration purposes what that kind of looks like. And how to deal with that uh, in terms of ATC. Now, when to step climb, it depends a little bit on your fly plan. As you can see on this fly plan, actually there's a step climb after uh, Tesla, and we already passed that waypoint, so actually a step climb should have been performed already right now. So it means if you see that on your fly plan, if you created a fly plan using an advanced fly planner like PFBX, um, it means that after that waypoint, you should climb to fly level 390. Uh, but in, in the flight management systems of the you know modern aircraft, including the 737, you have a step climb function. So uh, basically, you just go, just go to the cruise page right here of the VNAV system. There you have a step entry, and then hit 390, which we're flying to the east, so we have to fly an odd flight, flight level. So our next flight level would naturally be, be flight level 390. So put 390 in and then you get a step point. So as you can see, for me, it's very close right now because I already passed Tesla. And, uh, you know, basically this means that I have to step climb right now. So you can see step point at 928 Zulu in two nautical miles. Uh, well, normally you would see a higher value, of course, in about 15 nautical miles or whatever, depending on how long your route is. Uh, so you can just put that in. Uh, so uh, let's say we have now indeed uh, you know, we've now reached that step climb point and of course we need to have permission from ATC in order to step climb. So uh, before we do go any further, we're going to request a new flight level. And KLM 37 Juliet requests flight level 390. KLM 37 Juliet, roger, climb flight level 390. Climb flight level 390, KLM 37 Juliet. So, we got our clearance to climb to flight level 390. Uh, in that case, uh, in the Boeings, what you would do is, uh, you know, reset your altitude uh, like this, so 390, and then hit altitude intervent on some of the other Boeings that were modern, like the 777 or uh, 787. You would press the altitude button, but here we have a separate altitude intervent button. And what this does, it will update our cruise level. So you can see now it goes into VNAV speed. And the aircraft starts climbing, the engine starts accelerating. And if we go to the lags page uh, right now, we can see that flight level 390 for the time being is now our new cruise level. So that's the way you deal with that. So by doing this, uh, we save a little bit of fuel. As you can see, the savings are calculated uh, by 2%. Uh, 
Uh, now, of course, it depends a little bit on the wind as well. Uh, you know, um, the FMC doesn't take into account the wind uh, with this calculation. So, but anyway, you can kind of see uh, also using your fly plan after which waypoint it's uh, handy to do a step climb, and this is the easy way to do it. Uh, just uh, put in the new altitude, hit altitude intervent after you have received clearance to climb to a new fly plan. So as you can see, we have now almost reached our new cruise altitude for the time being. That's going to be our final cruise altitude. And another thing that you might encounter, a situation that you might encounter, is traffic separation. And this basically means that there is uh, uh, some traffic in the area and air traffic control wants you to avoid that traffic. And they usually do that by giving you a vector, so a temporary vector just to make sure you do not cross each other's path. So uh, let's say we just need a new heading from the air traffic controller because there's traffic. Let's see how that goes. Get him 37 Juliet, turn right heading 150 for separation. Right heading 150, KLM 37 Juliet. Okay, so we've received an actual heading. So we're gonna leave LNAV, which we normally use during cruise, and now select heading select. There we go. So this can happen, uh, especially also on VATS, it just, it just happens, you know. Um, you're just getting too close to auto traffic and you just need to make a little bit of a big move to get out of that traffic's way. So we're now leaving our uh, original fly plan basically temporarily um, and we'll just wait for further instructions. And the next instruction that you can expect after the situation has been cleared is probably just to direct to the next wave. So as you can see, our next waypoint is Exos, so probably the controller will send us direct to that waypoint in a minute when the situation has been resolved. Again, I'm 37 Juliet, clear of traffic, proceed direct to Exos. Direct to Exos, kill I'm 37 Juliet. So, we now have a uh, message that we've been cleared of the traffic, so we direct to Exos, there we go. And I'm going to turn on LNAV since we want to follow our lateral fly path again. So that's one way of how to uh, clear traffic, just by giving you a vector. And that's why it's also so important to align the heading bug with your route so that you don't have to, for example, if your heading bug is all over here, you don't have to scroll all the way back to 150, <laughs> like the heading that we were given. You know, so always make sure that the heading buck is aligned with your current uh, heading. And head, yeah, so now I'm just going to put it in line with the flight path that uh, we're now going to follow. Another method of uh, traffic separation, which I have never, never encountered before on VETSIM, but uh, it can happen, is that the controller wants you to fly an offset. An offset basically means that you're going to fly a couple of miles to the right or a couple of nautical miles from the left of your route. Um, basically to clear some traffic. You might also use that when you do want to do weather avoidance, but again, I've never used that before. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. So let's assume that the controller wants us to fly an offset. Again, I'm 37 Lima for separation. Uh, fly an offset of three nautical miles off your route to the right. Fly offset of 300 miles to the right, KLM 37 Lima. So, the controller wants us to fly an offset to the right of 3 nautical miles. So, in order to do that in the Boeing FMC, we go to the route page, and right here we have offset. And you can put in a distance, so for example, just 3 and then uh, the letter L or R for left or right. So, in this case, we want to fly right. There we go. And as you can see, it creates a uh, you know line next to the route, creating that offset of three nautical miles. So uh, you can also put in a start waypoint and an end waypoint. But since this is just an instruction to uh, avoid traffic, we don't know when we're going to turn back to the original route. So we're just going to hit execute and fly that offset. So now the airplane will fly that uh, exact same flight path basically, but just with a three nautical mile offset all the way. So let's pretend now that uh, we've been cleared of traffic again. Uh, let's see what air traffic control will say to us. Can a 370 mark clear of traffic from present position. Proceed direct to Lulag. Proceed direct to Lulag, KLM 370 mark. 
Okay, so since we've been uh, directed to Lulag, we can uh, resume our route. So, uh, of course, naturally you would just uh, go to the LAX page and go direct to Lulag. Uh, but you have to make sure that the offset is actually cleared. So in this case it is. So we're now proceeding direct to Lulag. Otherwise, you have to go back to the offset page and make sure you clear it here. Alright, so that's basically a couple of ways of traffic avoidance and how to deal with that uh, in regards to ATC and FMC. The next thing I want to talk about is weather avoidance. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this. I actually want to make a separate video about weather avoidance. And weather avoidance, in my opinion, is very uh, realistic and very exciting. Um, especially since the introduction of weather radar systems in combination with Active Sky and BMG, uh, you know, aircraft like BMDG. And of course, there are also many others. Um, you can now actually divert around weather on VETS and it's it's very cool. Uh, it happens uh, quite often especially in, you know as it starts to get spring right now so thunderstorms start to develop very easily so it does happen and I would highly recommend to get something like at Active Sky uh, and a BMDG aircraft or similar because uh, it's really really nice. So how to deal with that uh, just you know a few short uh, notes on how to deal with that. Um, now in this case there's no red in front of me anywhere, so uh, of course it's I cannot really show it properly right now. But just going over some of the phraseology that we would use. So when you're deviating around weather, uh, usually uh, you want to maintain a separation of 20 nautical miles from any storm cell that you're uh, flying past by, and you want to make sure that you stay on the upwind side of that storm cell. Okay, so. For example, if we look on the navigation display, I might be able to show a little bit. Um, so we now have a lot of tailwind. And let's say there's a storm right here, right over Lular. So instead of flying around the storm to the right and, you know, hitting the downwind portion of that storm right here, it's better to deviate out, uh, you know, around that storm to the left. So you're staying on the upwind side of that storm. Now this all really depends on the severity uh, of the cell and you know the altitude. It's it's hard to demonstrate it without an actual storm in front of me. But I just want to go a little bit over um, the actual you know the actual phraseology that you, you would need. So you want to maintain about a 20 nautical mile clearance from a storm. So in this case, uh, for example, if there's now a storm right over at Lulag, uh, we really want to make a left turn. Um, for example, heading 070 to really make sure that we're staying clear of that storm. So uh, let's just ask for that uh, and see how that goes. Get him uh, 37 Lima, request a left heading of 30 degrees to avoid weather. Get him uh, 37 Lima, roger, uh, turn left heading uh, 070. Left heading 070, kill him uh, 37 Lima. So there we go, we're now on a heading to avoid weather. Um, as you can see, if the storm would be above a Lular and we want to maintain 20 nautical miles separation, we might need to turn a little bit more even. But in this case, we're staying nice and clear of that storm if it would be around here. Okay, and, and we're on the upwind side, so that's good. So at some point, we probably want to turn back to another waypoint uh, next after Lular. So I'll just have to take a look. So we probably just want to... If the storm would be here, we just want to kind of fly left of it and then direct to Abudo at some point, all right? So that's the way uh, that you can kind of avoid the storm. So with phraseology, uh, I'm not even sure what the exact phraseology should be in the real world, but just to make sure, uh, you know, you're, that you're talking about the same thing as the controller. So for example, if you're requesting a heading of to the left of 30 degrees, just make sure ATC understands that that they are not that you're not requesting you have a heading of zero three zero. You could also just say uh, KLM three seven uh, Lima request a heading of zero seven zero to avoid weather, or you could say something like KLM three seven Lima request a right offset of twenty nautical miles to avoid weather. You know things like that. So uh, those are kind of the things that you can request from ATC. As you're cleared of the weather and you might need a further heading, you can always request that. In this case, let's just assume that the storm has kind of passed uh, to the right right now and we are able to direct, uh, uh, you know, go back to our route. And we're just gonna uh, let ATC know. 
and Galen 37 Lima, we are clear of weather, we can uh, resume original routing. Galen 37 Lima, roger, proceed direct to Abudo. Proceed direct Abudo, Galen 37 Lima. So, in this case, uh, we can proceed direct Abudo, I'll do it this way. And we direct to that again. And I'm gonna hit L map so we can follow our route. So, that's kind of the way that goes, alright? Um, and uh, again, I'll probably make a separate video about this topic because there's a lot to say about the weather radar and how it functions. So, um, but just so you know that it is possible to avoid weather and kind of know and understand the phraseology. The next thing I want to talk about is speed. And speed, you know, especially when it's very busy in an airspace when a lot of aircraft are coming in, for example, during the event, ATC mi might want to slow you down or speed you up. Um, so, let's just assume. ATC wants us to slow down before our top of descent. As you can see, our top of descent is approaching pretty soon. So, um, let's see how that goes. Get M370, man. What's your Mach number? So, as you can see, air traffic control asks for our Mach number. And where can we find that? Well, we can find it on the primary flight display. It's this number right here. So, Mach decimal 79. So, it means we're 79% away from uh, the uh, speed of sound basically. So we report that Mach number so the air traffic control has an idea about that, about our speed. Mach decimal 79, KLM 379. KLM 37 Lima, roger, speed Mach decimal 78 or less. Mach decimal 78 or less, KLM 37 Lima. So in this case we need to slow down a little bit. It might be there's a lot of traffic ahead of us, so um, we're just gonna uh, slow down. So. In order to do that, you go to the cruise page of the flight management system. As you can see, we have here our target speed. And we're just going to put in decimal 78 and hit execute. So now the aircraft will slow down a little bit. Of course, this is only a minor difference. In reality, the speed you know, instruction might be a lot lower. But uh, you know, just keep in mind that it can happen, that you know how to find your Mach number. Uh, and if you want to have a more exact value, by the way, in the bottom left corner, you can see the more exact value of your Mach number. And just be aware that you know how to change that. So just go to the FMC, to the cruise page, and change your target speed. Now we're almost reaching our top of descent, and this is also a question that comes up frequently. When should you ask for descent? Well, it's pretty simple. Your flight management system will calculate the top of descent for you, and provided that you have put in a correct route and also an arrival procedure, this top of descent should be pretty accurate. So, ATC normally will already give you a lower altitude before your top of descent. If ATC does not, you can just request for a descent, and it's pretty simple. So, this is the way that goes. And KLM 37 Lima requesting descent. KLM 37 Lima, descent flow 240. Descent flow 240, KLM 37 Lima. So, in this case, ATC tells us to descend right now, so to flight of 240, but we've not reached our top of descent yet, so how to deal with that? Well, we're almost reaching it in this case, so we probably can just load up, wait a little bit, and we probably won't take that long. But if your top of descent is still far away, you want to descend now. So you go to the VNAV page, hit descent, the descent page, and then hit descent now, and hit execute. And this will allow the aircraft to descend by itself. Uh, just before the top of descent, okay? Now you may also get the instruction um, when ready descent to flight level 240 and that means you have to wait till your top of descent when you are ready to descend uh, to before you actually start your descent, alright? So there's a difference between when ready descent to flight level 240 or descent to flight level 240. Just keep that in mind and know that you can use the descent page and descent now function to actually start the descent right now. Now, before your descent or while you're descending, you may get additional instructions to cross a waypoint at a particular speed or a below or above a certain flight level. And there are different ways to deal with that. So let's assume ATC wants us to cross a waypoint Masur at 250 knots below flight level 170. Let's see how that instruction goes. KLM 37 Lima, cross Masur at 250 knots and fly level 170 or below. Cross Masur at 250 knots and fly level 170 or below, KLM 37 Lima. So we need to enter that in the flight management system. So you can just enter in the speed first of all 
and then the slash which indicates we're going to enter the flight level and then he wants us to fly 170 or below so hit 170 and then enter B indicating below and put that here in the right line select key for that specific waypoint there we go and hit execute and as you can see we need to increase the descent rate a little bit because uh, uh, of course we need to slow down as well at this waypoint so just keep in mind that this can happen a few other things that uh, you can do is for example there might be a, an instruction to cross a waypoint at a particular flight level or above in that case you can just uh, if your speed would remain the same you enter a slash so you're entering the flight level and then hit 170 or above there we go and it executes that might also happen you know there are different kind of instructions that could occur and then another thing that you might uh, uh, encounter uh, although this instruction is not very common uh, you know it's usually already part of the actual standard terminal arrival route is that you have to cross a, a waypoint between particular flight level or flight levels so for example we need to cross Masur uh, between flight level 150 and flight level 170 hypothetically okay so how do you enter that so let's just assume the speed is the same again and uh, what you do is you st first start with the lower fly level so 150 and then above and then you enter 170 below so 150 above 170 below and then you enter that right here as you can see this means that we're going to cross this waypoint between those two fly levels so just keep in mind the lower fly level or above and then the higher flight level or below so that basically means between those flight levels all right it's just another way of putting that in the flight management system so keep in mind that you can uh, you know that you are able to do this and that you're able to put restrictions in the flight management system again you can also just enter it with a speed so let's say we have instructions cross mass or 220 and then between flight level 100 uh, and flight level uh, 170 for example again 100 or above, 170 or below. Uh, we get a lot of a lot of warnings right now because I'm changing the flight path all the time. But that's okay. So 220 knots, 100 or above, and 170 or below, and then hit execute. So, you know, those are the kind of the instructions that you might get. But again, in most cases, you'll probably just get something like uh, 250 knots and then uh, 170 or below. So I'm just going to put that in right now as per the original instruction. Now the final thing I want to talk about is holding, and holding can encounter can be encountered en route, but especially during descent. And usually you start a holding at a waypoint uh, where your arrival route starts. So in this case, our arrival is the Nerdu 4 Kilo arrival at Vienna. And as you can see, there's already a holding pattern at this waypoint Nerdu. Now ATC might instruct you to hold at this waypoint. Uh, especially when it's very busy and just you just need to wait for the traffic to clear before you can come in for landing um, so there are different options uh, you know this waypoint Nerdu just has a specific instruction already you have to hold at 6000 in an inbound course of 104 6000 or above that is and ATC might just give you instructions uh, specific instructions for that holding so let's see how that goes Okay, I'm at 37 Lima, hold at Nerdu at flight level 80. Hold at Nerdu, flight level 80, okay, I'm 37 Lima. So, we've got our instruction to hold at Nerdu at 8,000 feet, or flight level 80 in this case. Um, so, what you can do is go to the flight management system, and then go to the hold page. Again, this is the way it works in the Boeing FMC. Uh, but anyway, uh, we want to enter a hold, so you just uh, click next hold and then you here come to the hold page and there's an option to hold at so we want to hold at Nerdu in the meantime I'm just gonna lower the altitude to 8000 there we go as instructed so we want to hold at Nerdu there we go and we're just gonna click this line select key again to make sure that's in there there we go now there are a couple of things that you can enter Alright, you want to hold at Nerdu at flight level 80, so 
uh, we're just going to enter slash 080 right here there we go and what you also want to uh, put in is the direction of your turn and the direction of the inbound course now as you can see on the chart the inbound course of this hold is 104 and you have to fly a right turn so i'm going to enter 104 and then slash r indicating an inbound course of 104 and a direction of the turn is a right turn there we go and i'm going to hit execute okay now these hand paths and achievable i uh, might not, not have put a realistic altitude in here but just so you know uh, how to achieve this, okay? We probably just need to, um, you know, continue the, um, you know, descent a little bit further while we are holding, but that's okay. But just keep in mind uh, that you are aware of the holding function. So go to the hold page, enter a hold. As you can see, we have here our uh, first hold, Nerdu and you put in a target speed or target altitude depending on what is published on the chart or what instructions ATC gives you and then you put in the inbound course and then the direction of the turn those are the most important values that you have to put in and the lag time is usually one minute and the lag time is basically the, the straight portion of the holding pattern um, so how long you will be flying there okay so those are all kind of values that you can put in and then the FMC will also give you a uh, best speed, for example. Uh, but you can also put in your own speed at which you want to fly this world, okay? Uh, so that's kind of how that works. Again, uh, you have to see this in practice in order to see how this exactly uh, works. Of course, I'm not an air traffic controller, so I would not know what the you know, proper altitude right now would be. But at least you have an idea right now. And I hope this uh, helped, uh, guys, this uh, quick insight on how to deal with our route instructions in terms of ATC uh, phraseology and also how to deal with that in terms of uh, the flight management system um, and again I'll probably create more videos on this topic especially on weather avoidance and maybe also on uh, diversions and holding because uh, those are interesting topics that uh, you do not encounter on every VATS flight but it can happen that you do end up in a situation where you know you suddenly have to do all those kind of things which don't happen on a normal flight so just keep that in mind for now for more fencing tutorials uh, make sure you watch my 2017 fencing tutorial series there's a link in the description i'm sure you will like that um, there's lots of information about flying on fencing of course this is more of the advanced stuff uh, but basically if you want to start your career on fencing make sure you watch those videos for you uh, get the basics right and if you like this video and if you like the content here on the aviation pro channel make sure you subscribe and if you can uh, feel free to support the channel it would be very much appreciated uh, there are some links in the description make sure you check out my patreon page as well over at patreon.com slash aviation pro so i'd like to thank you for watching this video and i will see you next time